Uh, Podrick, we're here to discuss Terence McSweeney. Yeah, he was the Lord Mayor of Cork, and uh, he died in Brixton Prison after 74 days, 74 days on hunger strike. And we're back around the Civil War and the... No, the War of Independence, 1920. Right. 1920, he died in 1920. And uh, he said to the judge who arrested him, he said, and he, he was the Lord Mayor of Cork, so he was an elected official. He said, I'll, uh, I'll be free in four weeks. Dead or alive, I'll be free because you're not going to hold me. Um, and that, that's what he said, and, and that's what he did. The only thing is it took him a lot longer than four weeks to die. And it was, it's a tragic, horrible, terrible story. But uh, because of his sacrifice, the impact it had was, was enormous, huge global impact. And it meant that the British essentially couldn't maintain, um, they couldn't maintain moral authority in Ireland after that. That was it. Wow. So that's what Terence McSweeney did. And he did it in London, uh, in Brixton Prison. And, uh, so it, is it true to say... Uh, Almost 3,000 people passed through Brixton. 30,000. 30,000. At wow. least 30,000, yeah. My gosh. Yeah. The, the story of McSweeney, so he, he, his predecessor had been assassinated. Uh, Tom, Thomas McCurtain was assassinated. Yes. He, was, he was the Lord Mayor. He was shot by uh, the Black and Tans, probably. Mm -hmm. But he, he was shot in, in, in... He was assassinated mm -hmm. by uh, unknown individuals. When Terence McSweeney became Lord Mayor, he was then himself arrested... Pretty soon after that, um, on dubious charges of having a cipher, or having documents that he shouldn't have had, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, sentenced to two years in prison, and uh, he immediately went on hunger strike. He never touched another bite of food from the from the moment he was arrested oh, until he died. Did he, uh, he was arrested in Cork and brought back to Brixton? Yes. So he was arrest, arrested in Cork, and they took him to Brixton because they they probably thought they couldn't hold him because the city. Um, was in uproar. I mean, it was just before the Black and Tans burnt Cork, the centre of Cork, to the ground. So Cork was the epicentre of the Irish uh, rebellion, really. Um, they took him to Brixton, and th they tried to manage what was happening. And they didn't succeed, but only because he showed this extraordinary determination. But he said himself famously, his famous quote was, it is not those who can inflict, but those who can endure who will triumph. That was his quote. So, so he was also an author. Yeah, he was an author. And, and a that playwright. was no doubt before he was a politician. Yeah, well, that's, his dream was to be a playwright. And he wrote plays and uh, poems and, and essays. And uh, he showed some promise. He did. He showed some promise. Yeats put on, after he died, Yeats put on his poem. I think it was called The Revolutionary, or The Revolutionaries at the Abbey, and it was very successful. But, but McSweeney's effect was not just in Ireland. I mean, he had a huge effect on people like Ho Chi Minh, mm -hmm. who was at that time working in London as uh, a dishwasher in London. Uh, he had a huge effect on Gandhi. Uh, Marcus Garvey, the... the um, Jamaican. The Jamaican black nationalist, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what you saw, what was happening was that the, the British authorities and Lloyd George particularly um, were trying to manage the hunger strike. Thomas Ashe had died about three or four years before another Irish revolutionary. He died through force feeding. So it was already controversial. So what they did, um, they waited until he lost consciousness and then they started to feed him um, intravenously when he couldn't, he couldn't object. So it prolonged the agony really. Um, so it's 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 extraordinary story, but it's 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 unfortunately it's yeah. unfortunately true. Um, and the play deals with Max Sweeney. Yeah, yeah. It, it deals with the story of Max Sweeney and his wife during yeah. the time he's in hunger strike. So the character of his wife is key yes. to the play. And yes. um, yeah, it's 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 written by John Dunn. John Dunn died a year ago, actually. With, celebrating the anniversary right. of his death but he was such a great playwright um he wrote history plays and honored people in history such as yeah. Sweeney and some of the men from 1916 and we're gathering we're gathering people to celebrate the anniversary of his death in, in remembrance of John Donne. Oh, it's great. Fantastic. But he gave young actors opportunities to perform in plays, uh -huh. and uh, he created lots of theatre moments for young actors. So he's special in the theatre community, 
And this play was one of the last ones that he wrote. Wow. So we want to celebrate that, but also tell the social history, the, the, the history story of Max Sweeney. Well, which is he was married to a woman called um, Muriel Murphy. That's right. And yeah. she was the daughter of a big uh, brewing magnate in Cork. Oh, Murphy's, Murphy's huh? stout, <laughs> Peter Murphy's, yeah. and uh, of course they were very against her marrying a rebel, but she married him anyway, and uh, she was by his side as much as she could be, yeah. herself and uh, Max Sweeney's sister Mary, uh, but they were particularly upset when they when he lost consciousness, and they started to feed him uh, liquid beef and things like that, because it just prolonged <laughs> his death, so that's why he he was on hunger strike for 74 days, uh, which is exceptional. Uh, When he died, um, they promised that they could take, the sisters and the family could take the body back to Ireland. Um, But when they got to Hollyhead, uh, they were mugged. They, well, they, mugged for the body. they were mugged for the body. Wow. That's the only oh way you can describe God. it. I know it sounds very, very, uh, very coarse, but that's what happened. Uh, they were beaten up um, by the army, by the police, and they took the body and they put it on a steamer, a little tugboat, and they took it directly to Cork because they didn't want uh, it to pass through Dublin. Hence the song, Will My Soul Pass Through Our Land. Hence, hence wow. that, that song, those lines of the song. Um, and uh, the sisters were, I mean, they, they, they were badly beaten. Um, and what they did was they refused to follow the body to Cork. They just carried on. <coughs> and it meant that what happened in Dublin was even, was even greater than what it would have been uh, because people were incensed. And then when the body arrived in Cork, people refused to accept it. So they were stuck with this token of resistance trying to get rid of trying to get it off their hands like Macbeth <laughs> oh my God, he was amazing. a big fan of Macbeth uh, actually uh, um, Terence McSweeney he was a big fan wow. of Shakespeare but uh, so that's why I say when, when you see the effect that had people like Gandhi and Mao Zedong and, and people they recognised that uh, non-violent resistance is perhaps more powerful than violent resistance and I think McSweeney proves that I think that if there's a lesson there that that that's the proof. Yeah. Um, has McSweeney got a statue now in Cork? He has a statue now in Cork, and he's been rehabilitated like a lot of rebels were um, in the hundred years celebrations. When I was growing up, he wasn't talked about that much, or he wasn't celebrated because of the troubles, and they were worried. The authorities, particularly in Ireland, were worried that um, th- you know the martyrdom aspect of McSweeney's life frightened them. And of course, Bobby Sands, as we know, is the was the McSweeney of our times because mm. exactly. uh, did Bobby Sands um, cite McSweeney as an, yeah. uh, an it, influence? <coughs> yeah, he would yeah. have been the main influence, right? No doubt. I just want to say, guys. By the way, the hunger strike was started by the women. Hannah Shee Skeffington was true. the first person to ever go on that's hunger true. strike. The suffragette. That's right. You're right. Um, yeah. The women started the hunger strike. Yes, which, that's true. You know, yes. Anyway, I just thought I'd just, just saying just as we that. say. Um, Thank you so much for le- telling us all about Terence McSweeney, someone we should all be Googling at the very least, Absolutely. get a little bit more. Um, thank you so much. Garmil Margot, thank you.